If you're wondering if you should take probiotics with your antibiotics, you've come to the right video because in this video we're going to be discussing why you should take probiotics with your antibiotics, specifically how to take them for maximum benefit and the specific strains and species that you should include. So first let's get into why you need to take probiotics with your antibiotics. So if you're unfamiliar, antibiotic is something that kills all of your beneficial bacteria with the problematic bacteria that it's trying to address. So we have all these little beneficial microbes on our gut lining. This is a mucosal lining and they do so many things for us. And I always mention they create our hormones, our neurotransmitters, they create our vitamins. They create B vitamins, they break down foods, they create enzymes, and that's what they do in a healthy gut. Now, when you take antibiotics, they come in and they don't just destroy the little bacterial infection that you're trying to deal with. They destroy everything. So maybe not everything, but they come in and they decimate your good bacteria that we need to do all of those functions in our body. So if we just do that, then let's say we ingest something we, you know, from what we eat or you know, soil, air, toxins, whatever. Now there's all these little spaces where that bacteria, which is probably bad or opportunistic, can colonize in your gut lining. And now we have all these kind of bad and opportunistic yeast, bacteria, fungi, parasites maybe, they can easily colonize this space that is supposed to be um, colonized by the beneficial bacteria. And now they're going to be stealing nutrients. We're supposed to be eating food. Food comes in and the beneficial probiotics, those good guys, eat that food, create nutrients for our body, create hormones and neurotransmitters so that our body can thrive and work optimally. And when we destroy those and now we have all these opportunists, um, yeast, pathogens, parasites, bacteria, they're stealing our food sources and they're probably exhaling toxic gases and just really creating havoc on our body. It's not something we want. So antibiotics without probiotics causes this overgrowth of yeast and pathogens and parasites because there's no beneficial bacteria protecting that gut lining. There's no beneficial bacteria trying to get these guys out. Um, but when we take probiotics, let's say we have that antibiotic, um, then when we take a probiotic with it, it just goes in after the antibiotic and reestablishes that good bacteria. So maybe it got killed off, but right after it, you're coming in with a ton of good bacteria, those probiotics that can re-line, re-inhabit the gut lining and do all those good things for you. And if you want to understand more about how antibiotics work and why you should definitely avoid them, I'm going to link another video right here. Now let's get into when you should take your probiotic for maximum benefit. The first thing you want to do is you want to take it frequently. Now, this is a unique circumstance. Your good bacteria is getting decimated every time you take that antibiotic. So this is a time where you want to take that probiotic more frequently. If you're not taking antibiotics, you can just have some sauerkraut with your meals a few times a day. But in this case, you want to be taking it frequently so that you're constantly reestablishing that good bacteria. You also want to take it away from the antibiotic. So if you take your antibiotic at 9 a.m., maybe you start taking your probiotics at 12 and then again at 4 or 6. A great time to take it is right before you go to bed at night, assuming you're not taking your antibiotic then, because that gives your whole night when you're not interrupted with an antibiotic, you're not interrupted with food or water or any of that, and it's going to give it the most time to go in and repopulate because we don't want to just take these bacteria from our probiotics and then they go in and do something. We actually want them to repopulate. So we want to create an environment that allows them to multiply and multiply and grow and repopulate our gut bacteria to do all those beneficial things for us. Um, so away from an antibiotic frequently. And I also say away from food. I say on an empty stomach, at least 30 minutes before eating is ideal. And I'll tell you why. When we're eating, it increases our stomach acid. When we have a lot of stomach acid, it just makes it a lot harder for that probiotic to get through the stomach acid without getting burned up. So if you take that pill and if you go into a very acidic stomach, there's a good chance that a lot of that bacteria is just gonna get burned up and it's not actually gonna make it into your large intestines where we really want it to go. We can take it 30 minutes to before food you don't have those digestive enzymes going, you don't have the stomach acid production, and it's just gonna have a better chance to get to your mouth. So before we get into the last part, if this video has given you value and you find it helpful, I would love if you would like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Okay, so now let's get into specifically what probiotics are best to take with your antibiotics. So I am always a fan of probiotic foods. Those are gonna be your fermented foods, your yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha over supplements and that's for a few reasons they're not going to have those crazy nasty fillers like silica and like all that weird stuff 
Um, they have way higher amounts of probiotics. They generally have more variety, which is really what we want. We don't want just like lactobacillus acidophilus. We want, uh, you know, bifidobacterium and tons of different things. We want beneficial E. coli. We want beneficial streptococcus. We want all of these things, they work together really well in our ecosystem. They work together, they communicate, and then they can change and really give your body the maximum benefit. So I love probiotic foods for that reason. They're also less expensive. I've done the math actually on a few of probiotic foods comparing to the supplements, and these consistently have way higher counts of colony forming units, which is just a probiotic that's able to go into your gut and repopulate and colonize and protect your gut. Um, so I'm a big fan of probiotic foods over probiotic supplements and variety is key, right? So we don't just wanna have yogurt. If you can, have some sauerkraut, have some yogurt, have some kefir, have some kombucha. As much as you can, get that variety because they all contain different strains and species. Some are beneficial yeast, some are beneficial bacteria. There's, um, you know, sauerkraut's really high in lactobacillus, which populates more of our small intestines, where the fermented dairy like yogurt or milk kefir is really high in bifidobacterium, which is really good for populating the bowel. And we really want all of those things populated with exactly what they need. So um, having a variety is really gonna give you the best bet. So another thing I really like to emphasize during antibiotic use is you wanna have probiotic strains that contain beneficial yeasts. So um, antibiotics go in and they kill all of our bacteria, but they generally don't kill yeasts or fungi or things like that. Um, and there's actually some really good beneficial strains of yeast that we can use to our advantage in these situations because you can take them and they're not gonna be killed by that antibiotic. Foods to emphasize if you want those beneficial yeasts, Kombucha has the beneficial yeast that won't be killed by the antibiotic. Milk kefir is great. It has many strains of beneficial yeast. Water kefir as well. So those are three fermented foods that are gonna be super helpful in getting you those probiotic yeasts that aren't killed off by antibiotics. So that's gonna be something really, really worth emphasizing during this time. Now, if you don't wanna do fermented foods or you just are like, I just wanna supplement, this is too much, or I can't have dairy or, you know, whatever, there is one supplement that can be really helpful and it's called Saccharomyces boulardii. It is a beneficial yeast and you can get it in supplement form. And I'm gonna link below my favorite supplement for that. I think it's great to have on hand. Um, and the one that I've linked, it's the BioQuilt one. It doesn't need to be refrigerated. It's just the specific strain of that beneficial yeast. And I recommend everyone have it on hand because as much as I hate antibiotics and I'm like, don't take them unless you absolutely have to and it's life-threatening, I think it is good to have them on hand because things happen. You know, I had a baby. I wanted to get stitches. They didn't tell me. And, oh, I found out the next day that I got two doses of antibiotics straight in my blood. And I wish I would have had that Saccharomyces boulardii that I could just take and repopulate myself or in any situations where you really do have to have antibiotics. It's good to have it in the end. 